Today I'm going to tackle a project that I showed done a while ago. Three different seals for the XJ's oil filter. So there's the 90 degree elbow. They like to, to drip over time. I'm expecting the gaskets to be very dry and crumbly. So there's three. And the big thing I'm going to do differently is I'm actually going to use an adapter that actually doesn't need to be punched out of a socket. So this ha this comes from a kit. Here's the info, carbide torque set. I'll put the uh, product number in the description below. And it comes in all kinds of different sizes. Figured this could be a little bit more handy than uh, the traditional way of doing it. Uh, this particular one works with either 19 or a three quarter inch. So I'll be able to just sneak that into whichever end of the socket I want to use depending on the clearances and hopefully this will make a for easier job. Fun on this vehicle is I do ha still have the air conditioning lines as well as an engine skid plate underneath it. So access may be a bit challenging. This vehicle hasn't started in a while so I don't have to worry about the oil being too hot. And hopefully that bolt comes out the way it should. Just looking at it from up here it's definitely going to be a bit of a fun from an accessibility point of view. And if I try to sneak in the, the bit, oh, they really made this tricky. So it's definitely gonna fit in there. There, that slides in. And let's see if I can break it free with the shorter of the two, which does have a 90 degree, well not a 90, but an offset. I have heard that these are usually on really, really tight. There is Loctite on them, so we'll see if the longer bar gives me any type of advantage. We have to put it in together, just because of the angle. I should have wiped it, wiped it down a little bit before I started. Here's the, uh, the infamous bolt from below. Uh, as we can see, there's a lot of saturated oil everywhere down here, so I'm hoping that this is part of the reason. Oh yeah, a lot, much better access from below. And I already felt it turn. So I'm just going to turn to the ratcheting side because, well, it's broken free. broken free and of course I don't have an oil pan so before I go any further I'm gonna go get one there will be a little bit of oil that will leak out of it I'm not expecting much just because uh, it should only be whatever's in the oil filter the oil filter is not that old so I'm not gonna remove it and possibly damage that gasket so I'm just gonna walk this bolt out so the engine skid actually did a good job of redirecting the oil spill, so just be careful if you have one uh, as to where the oil is actually going to go. So 19 mil ratcheting wrench is definitely easier in this spot until you drop it. So I found working on this vehicle, I'm usually climbing up on the front bumper. Could be worse. One of the important things to remember when putting it back together, right here there's an alignment pin. We'll soon see it once the housing's off. And that keeps it from spinning when you're putting it back together. All right, this is loose. Get the tool out. Hopefully the filter, yeah, the filter's gonna stay where it is. Now you can fish it out. So here's the probably the the worst of the the gaskets. Holy smokes, that looks brittle. So I'll have to pick it out. But the the important part is removing this bolt. It has to be removed. There's actually a few gaskets in here. So ideally, you'll be able to keep turning and pu putting some pressure on the bolt and working it out. So as you can see, it's moving. 
Don't smack it with a hammer or you won't be able to throw it back into the block after. And usually when it's hard to come out is because the other two gaskets in there, at least one of them and is probably rock hard and doesn't want to work its way out. I'm going to wipe this down a little bit better before I keep going. A little bit of engine degreaser. Be ca cautious of which side of the adapter this is being sprayed on so it doesn't get into it. It'll work for a few uh, few seconds and I'll uh, use a few tools to get the gunk off of it. Now this should come off relatively easily. Definitely a lot easier to work on a part that's clean than one that's cruddy. Less likely for it to slide out of your hand. You can need a little bit more on this side. Ideally I'd have like a, a plastic bristle brush that I can just rub against it. So I'm just going to use a pick, rub the crud off of it, use some more shop towels, and uh, this will be a whole lot better than what it was before. Yeah, when there's this much crud near the oil filter housing, it's most likely from the oil filter housing. So this will definitely help reduce one of the leaks out of this vehicle. It's not perfect, but it's a heck of a lot better than what it was. So as mentioned before, this is where the alignment pin goes once it's being reinstalled. So what I'm gonna do now is I'll grab a piece of wood, just make sure there's no dust, dirt, whatever on it. And I'll push up against it as I'm using the, the tool. There we go. It's out. So now I've got three gaskets accessible. Let's uh, start with the, the larger one. So again, you, whoop, more oil. You'd think I'd learn. I guess before I go any further, I'll dump whatever oil is left in the oil filter. So hopefully when I tilt it this time, it won't leak oil everywhere. Done leaking. It's pretty impressive how brittle it is. And it's always fun when you have a hard time moving something that's supposed to be round. It's pretty flat now. So this one goes here. Awesome. Quickly clean the inside. Make sure that it's clean. Looks pretty good for uh, an engine with the amount of kilometers on this one. And on this, there's two gaskets. So there's a small one here and there's a bigger one there. Just make sure you get both in your kit. Different kits will have different quantities of gaskets depending on how many years they, they cover. There's one. This one looks a little bit bigger. Maybe it, it looks like I pulled the wrong one out of my kit because I did have quite a few. So I'm going to have to go through, rooting through the box and find the ones that match these two. So these are the uh, the ones that I pulled off of the, uh, the adapter the bolt. For some reason the kit I have, which has pretty much everything else but these gaskets, it does, did have the bigger one. It doesn't have these smaller ones. So I've got a generic kit, happens to have uh, what seems to be identical for the larger of the two. And the one that goes inside the housing is 0.5, millim 0.5 millimeters thicker diameter. So this one's, uh, this one I believe measured as two. Yeah. And the one I have measures as 2.5. So hopefully that's close enough that it actually works. If it doesn't, I'll have to go to the parts store and get another kit. So the easier of the two is going to be the one that was visually identical, which goes there. And the other one was a tad different diameter, which goes here. Actually, now I'm wondering if I was even looking at the right grommet in the kit. And the other one did fit over it. This one does too. Okay. So put that there. I'm going to slide this in without too much effort. It's always a good idea to put a bit of oil on any gaskets. Turns out there's just enough inside the housing to be able to give them a little bit of lubrification. And will this fit or is that going to be too snug? It's going to be too snug. Let's double check which of the two doesn't want to work. I just want to sneak in. Oops, I definitely went in further. Yeah, that'll go in. So I definitely have to find a slightly thinner gasket for the uh, the one inside the housing. 
So I found one that was just a slightly smaller diameter. It's still the, the wrong thickness, but now it does fit into the housing. So I'll start reinstalling it and uh, hopefully this actually works out and I don't end up with just a, a mess later on. The, the good thing is, is at least the one that is questionable is the one on the inside, which just keeps the clean and the dirty oil separated. At least the one at the back where it keeps the oil from pissing out of the housing will be the right size. So I added a little bit of blue Loctite to the threads. Just wanna make sure that it doesn't lock out over time. There is an alignment pin, so just gonna make sure that it sits correctly as it's being reinstalled. Something like that. Hopefully it will thread itself correctly. Half the fun is finding the right angle. Feels like it's threading now. Hopefully I can get this in there and start ratcheting it. Just checked in the service manual, it's not really clear if this bolt is torqued to 35 or 50 foot pounds. Can find the illustration, just found a, a listing of torque specs at the back of a section. So, again, it's just keeping this bracket in place. You don't want to crush the little rings, at the same time, you don't want them to, to leak. And of course the fun is just getting a tool in here that you can actually calibrate or check. So what I'm gonna end up doing is just going something a little bit longer, giving a little bit more oomph, calling it a day. So it didn't take that much effort to remove it, so I don't think it needs that much effort to put it back on. You can see that it, it's nicely lined up with that alignment pin near the block. There. And that's good. Now the good old start it up and see what happens. So I haven't started this in a little while and clearly the battery's not happy with me. Time to get so the vehicle isn't too happy so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to charge. 15 amps. Give it a little bit of time. Come back start it up. Don't know if I've waited long enough but let's try. Let's try. Looks like it's behaving. Time will tell. 